Hi everybody, so this next project is called Fun Sized. We're going to be taking a subject and we're going to be changing the size of this subject. So uh, my suggestion is to make the subject crazy small. So it could be an average size, normal sized thing like a human being or any creature like that and you can make it look smaller than it normally would be. Uh, you can make uh, it very dramatic, or you can make it kind of subtle, but the varying degrees of size change is, is really going to be up to you. Also, the subject. You can have it as a, an object. You can have it as, like I said, a creature. Um, but you want to come up with two different images. You want to come up with, you need to find a subject as I just mentioned, but you also need to provide a setting. So those are the two things you want to think about. So to show you an example of what I'm talking about, a couple of things you can do. Uh, well, first of all, here is the sample that I made uh, where I had a couple of giraffes on my notebook and I needed to be a little bit of an actress and I needed to uh, pretend that I'm seeing a couple of tiny giraffes on my notebook. Uh, so that is just one simple example. Uh, I found the picture of the giraffe off the internet and I took this photo just using my phone. So it's up to you how you want to uh, obtain these images, whether it's going to be a picture that you took yourself or it's going to be a picture you get off the internet. So, and again, your subject could be varied as well as your setting. So um, another place you can go to get some examples is I've done this project in um, in the classroom for a few years now and while this might look a little bit different than what we're looking for maybe a little bit more complex uh, this kind of gives you maybe a little bit more of a an idea of what you could do okay so the one difference is significant is that with this project I wanted the kids to provide two mini me's and I use the term mini me's because I wanted them to primarily use themselves. So they could use, you could use yourself, um, you know, in making a small version of yourself. I think that's kind of cute, but it's not mandatory. But this kind of shows you how you can have them interacting together. Another thing you can do is you can just go to the Google and you can Photoshop, uh, I mean, uh, Google up supersize Photoshop. Uh, or you can do fun size Photoshop. So you can see various examples. Okay, so some of these are very very complex done by professionals. Some of these are done by amateurs, but they're very very nicely done. It looks like this guy, for example, used a, you know, did a whole uh, section of different photos using the same dog and using himself. So anyway, hopefully that gives you a little bit of inf in inspiration. So the very first thing you're going to do, like I said, is to gather your images. So um, first thing you do is you open up the image that you want to use for your background. So I do have the notebook that I can certainly use, but I also took another picture, similar idea, using a post-it. So this is the one I'm going to be using for my example. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the image of my subject in a new layer. Okay, now I'm going to be just roughly kind of resizing it and making sure that it's going to work well together. So one thing you want to take note of, especially when you are putting the pictures together, is that the vantage point or the point of view of the photo of your subject and the setting, they kind of match. So this photo of the giraffe, the camera, the camera's point of view, the camera's vantage point is above the um, the ground. Okay, maybe the person's six feet tall and he's taking a picture, uh, because you know otherwise this horizon line you would get a lot less of the ground. Like this horizon line would be much lower if we were uh, lower to the ground, uh, from the camera's point of view. So I wanted to make sure that this kind of coincides very, very similar where 
my the vantage point is slightly higher, which is why I can see the top of the post-it. So if you're taking a picture from almost up on top of something, you want to make sure that the setting that you're taking, taking, uh, you're putting the image on kind of matches. So this looks pretty good. Uh, also, you know, dictate how big or how small you want this to be, and that could be absolutely edited later. So you just kind of rough it out. Now, the other thing you're going to be doing after you kind of set it up roughly, you want to get rid of all this background. So we're going to go back to this cutout mask, and you can remove from the mask. the areas of the background, just like how we did for a previous project, Splash of Color, for example. But now there is this tool that you guys can absolutely try, and it may or may not work. It's called AI Auto. I guess it's uh, artificial intelligence. And what it does is it will cut away, do all of this manual work automatically. So the idea is you will be left with a nice, clean, cut out of the two drafts. So you can certainly try it by just clicking on it. Now it's a special feature for Pixlr. And if you paid for it, if you had a premium membership or you logged in as a premium member, it would do this automatically. But with this, you have a couple of seconds to wait. So you hit continue. So you can see that it, it did cut out a lot of the background, but in a lot of the areas, it wasn't cut out really, really well. So for some of you guys, it may work out very well, but for others, not so much. You can see it still has a lot of the sand still going. Um, it also took away some of the features of this giraffe, like the ears are cut away and stuff. So, you know, while it may not work perfectly for some images, you certainly can try it. Now at this point, I can go back to my layer uh, lasso and stuff like that, and I can start, you know, fixing up the edge. So in some areas, such as down the neck over here, it, it cropped it really, really nicely, whereas in some of the other areas, not so much. So what you're going to do is you are going to now go through and get rid of all the background. So I got a little work to do down here around the, the baby giraffe. Um, I have a little work to do around Mommy Giraffe's face, as well as some of the tail's been cut off. So the next step is you're going to remove all of that background. And again, use the mask layer. Don't use the eraser tool um, for this because you want to have a little bit more control over what you're removing and also you want to be able to if you take away too much you can always go back and put it back so this gives you a lot more freedom than if you just went ahead and used let's say the eraser and you erased it away and you can't get it back um, unless you undo it so at least with this mask tool you could remove it and you can also put it back so and don't forget, make sure your brush is properly set up so you can use this tool proper. And zoom into your area. So we'll come back after I have this properly cropped. I did want to show you, provide for you an opportunity to see where this AI auto works pretty well. So in this image, a lot of the background is selected um, a lot of the background is, has a nice contrast against the penguin. It's fuzzier, it's kind of lighter, so let's see how this works out. It's doing the thing, and once again, since this is a premium feature, we can't get it absolutely for free. We have to just wait for a little ad. So let me hit continue. So you can see in this case, it was selected pretty well. So it just kind of depends on your image. Okay, so now that you have successfully got rid of all the background and cropped it nice and neatly, next thing you're going to do is you're just going to size this up where you would like this to be 
in your setting. So the post it's only so big, so I'm going to have to make these guys kind of small. Um, and also think about how you're going to be casting a shadow. So we're going to be making a shadow to create this uh, illusion that the giraffe is, the giraffes are on the post a little bit more. So the shadow I've decided to put on the left hand side, which is why I'm moving these giraffes to the right. But you also have to make sure that it looks like they are on the post-it. So I'm going to bring them as close to the front and to the right as possible. So it looks pretty natural. And that looks pretty good. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to be making a copy of this layer. And the copy is going to be used for the shadow. So you're going to click on the three buttons here and you go to duplicate layer. So before you do anything else, we want to take this layer and we want to get rid of the scissors. In other words, right now it's still a masked layer. So we want to make this mask, um, we want to get rid of this mask and we just want it to be um, a shape that does not have a mask. So to do this, you're going to go to the mask, cutout mask uh, tool and go up to these three buttons here and you're going to select apply mask. Now when you do this, it's applying the mask so I wouldn't be able to make any changes, like I won't be able to add anything, you know, I won't be able to re-add the background or anything like that, which is completely fine. So I'm doing this to the to the layer that's going to be my shadow. So you can see this one now has no more scissors. This one still has the scissors. This one's going to be uh, for my giraffe. This is going to be for the shadow. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to adjustments, making sure you're on the shadow layer and you go to brightness and contrast. We're gonna bring the contrast all the way up and we're gonna bring, bring the brightness all the way down. So you should be left with a shadowed image. Now this looks like it has a little bit of light to it yet. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the same process. I'll do it one more time. Bring the contrast all the way up bring the brightness all the way down until it is a complete silhouetted image. Okay, so this needs to be um, distorted and we're gonna be flattening it out and putting it off to the side here. So we're gonna line this up and we're going to go to image. No, I'm sorry, we're gonna go to layer. No, image, no, edit. <laughs> we're gonna go to edit and go to free trans transform. And no, sorry. Take two, free distort. So we go to edit, free distort. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower this down so that way it starts to look like a shadow and we wanna keep the shadow on the post-it so we're kind of limited. Now, here's what your difficulty is gonna be. And so while this might look like a shadow, the problem with this, I don't know if you realize this, think Peter Pan, the problem is is that the shadows should be stuck, and I'm just gonna leave it like this for a second, I'm gonna zoom in. The shadows should be connected to mommy giraffe's feet, but they're not. Because of the way that this is set up, we have the giraffe in front and we have the giraffe on the side. If I was working with one single image, I wouldn't have this problem, but since I have two different subjects, what I'm going to have to do is do two different shadows. So I'm going to just undo what I did so far. So what I'm going to do before um, I go too crazy here is I'm going to split this up into two different layers. I'm going to have a shadow for this, for mommy giraffe, and I'm going to have a shadow for baby giraffe. So I'm going to use the lasso tool, and I'm going to go ahead and select as carefully as possible the giraffe. Now if you have an image that only has one subject, you probably won't have this issue at all. Do this one more time. So I just have a feeling I grabbed like that. And get the whole the feeling I had that cut off. So I'm going to select this. I am going to edit cut and edit paste. So what it did is it took 
the layer and it made it a separate piece. So again, this may or may not be something that you guys are gonna have to do depending on your subject. But for me, I had to, I cut it into two pieces and I'm gonna do the shadow separately. So I'm just gonna put this mommy shadow over here for a minute. I'm gonna work with baby shadow. So once again, I'm gonna to need to hit this brightness and contrast again. Brightness down, contrast up. And now I go to edit, free transform. Nope, edit. I don't wanna do the right thing, I guess. Edit, free distort, and I'm gonna lower this down. Just like this. And I'm gonna make sure it's kind of slightly under the giraffe. Yeah, that looks good and apply it okay by the way this shadow goes behind okay because it's shadow is not going to be in front it's going to be behind it. it's going to be blocked off by the giraffe sitting there okay so now i'm going to do the same thing with the mommy giraffe's shadow um hit the adjustment one more time okay, edit free distort Lower it down. So you'll see I'm going to have a bit of an easier time lining up the feet. Now it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it should look pretty good. Right. Also, I'm kind of making it so it sort of matches the same kind of angle as the draft sitting there. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I hit apply. Okay, um, and I'm going to put this behind just like before. Okay, so while these kind of start looking like shadows, this looks really good. We're going to make it a little bit more believable. Uh, but before we do, once I'm happy where the shadows are, these two, I can merge these two shadows together. So we have baby shadow, mommy shadow, and we're going to merge them together. I'm going to go to the top layer. Go over here and I go to merge down. So what it'll do is it'll just merge with the, the lower, the, the layer that's right underneath it, which was the baby shadow. So now they're connected again. Okay. Some of you guys, again, won't have to deal with that because uh, your shadow, single shadow just worked fine. So what I'm going to do is make it a little more realistic by going to filter, detail, Gaussian blur. So what this will do is it'll blur them up and look a lot more realistic. So I'm very, very happy with that. You can also, if you feel like that shadow is a little bit too dramatic, you can also turn down the transparency of that particular shadow of both of them. Okay. And I think by toning it down a little bit, it looks better. So some finishing touches. If you're happy with the way the shadow looks, uh, you can just call it a day. But there might be shadows under here that I didn't quite get. So you can manually create some shadows. To do this, make a new blank layer, go with a brush, make sure the brush is gonna paint with black, make sure the brush is fuzzy, and also bring the step down, bring the softness up, and you could brush shadows in place. So there might be one cast right underneath here, there might be some cast over here. Uh, you can also set the opacity of that brush lower or higher. You can also change the size of the brush, the shortcuts. If you look at your keyboard and look at the letter M, right next to the M to the right of it are these brackets. You hit the bracket to the right, it makes it bigger. Bracket to, to the left makes it smaller. And now I'm doing this on a separate layer. This is all by itself. And I'm going to move it behind my giraffes. And if you brush this on, you can see it's very, very dramatic. So I'm going to undo it. I'm going to make a smaller brush. And you can go ahead and apply these shadows and maybe like where the feet are, like right here. Maybe under here, maybe underneath this joint and underneath here. And again, you know, some of you guys might not want to do this, but some of you guys might want to add a little bit of something. So that while that doesn't look realistic and you can always erase areas that might be 
too big. So what you're going to do after this, a little bit more here, is you can go to back to your Gaussian blur. Filter, Details, Gaussian Blur, move these blurs. So you can see that it just adds a little bit more shadow, a little bit more deeper shadows, darker shadows. You could take this layer if you wanted to lower the transparency a bit, but you can see without it, it looks like it might have some missing shadows. And with it, just adds a little bit more dimension to it. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Very, very happy with it. For some people, if you find that your subject is too light or too dark, it just doesn't match the, the setting, you could change um, some of the adjustments. You could adjust the temperature and tint. Let's say that you need to, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong way. So temperature and tint, you can see you can kind of make it more warm, more cool. And tint it up a little bit. You can also adjust brightness and contrast, not as big as we did before, but if you wanted to slightly adjust the contrast, it might look a little bit more vivid. You can see the difference just to kind of make it a little bit more defined. You can do that. Um, you can also do the settings in the background as well. If you find that the background's too dark, too light, go to adjustments. You could play around with brightness, temperature, hue saturation, all sorts of stuff here. And uh, let's just do, do temperature or brightness and contrast. If I wanted to adjust the lighting of my setting, I can do that as well. All right. So hopefully you can have some fun with this. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. Now before you go, one very last thing you can do is if I wanted to change this giraffe and put them, put them in a different setting, um, or I wanted to, you know, I could change the subject and use the same setting, or I can use the same setting and put it in a different sub, you know, I, you get the idea. So let's say that I want these giraffes on a different, in a different setting, but I don't want to go through all the work and do it all over again. So what I can do is I can take the layers that of my shadow and the details of the shadow and the giraffes. And I can merge these guys together. So I'm going to merge down and merge down. So you can see now I have the giraffes and then the background's a separate layer. What I can do is I can select this background and put it, or this um, these giraffes and put them in a different background. Let me open up notebook. Okay, so I can go back to this image. I am going to use the magic wand tool. And what I'm going to do is actually, believe it or not, select the background anywhere out here. So what, I, what is selected from the giraffes is all of the background. So I actually want, instead of selecting the background, I actually want to select the opposite of the background. So I want to select the subject. So I can go to select, invert selection, and the shortcut's control I. So you can see now that the marching ants are around my subject. At this point, I'm going to hit Command C to copy it. I go to the new image. I can either go to paste or control V. So now you can see that including the good shadows, they're here. And I can just paste it into a new background, just like that. So for some of you, you, you might find that to be kind of entertaining. You could put the giraffes in various places. Uh, you have a little bit more freedom, okay? So um, again, have fun with this. And uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. It's just gonna be much easier to create a shadow for than the giraffes because uh, it's a simpler uh, it's a simpler image. There's just one subject and there's really one spot that it would be connected to the shadow and this is this foot right here. This foot's up in the air. So to go through the process again, I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm also going to make sure that this layer 
has the mask applied because I don't want that cut out anymore. Uh, I'm going to change the brightness down, contrast up. And it looks like I don't have to hit it again. It looks nice and solid. And I go to edit, free distort. And I go ahead and I start to maneuver this down flat. And as I said, I don't have to be concerned about that shadow touching anything except for this one foot here. So I also find that by having the notebook, I have a lot more space to play around with more than that post-it. Okay, and that looks good. I'm going to switch the order and again you can see here the shadow looks like it's just connecting to that one foot and that is completely fine. So I go to filter, details, Gaussian blur. I blur this up. I can lower the opacity or the transparency. So depending on your images, some, some of these might be a little bit more complicated. Some of these might be a little easier. I'm going to make another blank layer. I'm going to use my brush. I think the brush is saved from before. It should be good, pretty good quality. I'm actually going to make it a bit bigger. Not too big. Too big, too big. I'm happy with that. So maybe a little bit under here. Just make sure that this goes underneath Mr. Penguin. A little bit, a little darker there. Uh, I made that too much. I'm going to remove some of it. And don't forget about the Gaussian blur. Okay, I like that. A little bit more. So again, you can get sort of caught up in this and you can really add a lot of details or, oops, or you know, this is the, this is the Photoshop way. This is the graphic designers and the computer artists, you know, they spend significant periods of time working on their craft and perfecting what they want, you know, perfecting their perfecting their images. So, if you're pretty happy with that, again, you can save it. If you wish to change the size, you can merge these layers together. If you wish to put them in a different setting. You can certainly do that. You have the whole thing selected. And it's at this point, if I wanted to shrink him down a little bit, you could have a couple of penguins here if, if you wanted to. Uh, but like I said, if you wanted to transport him somewhere else, you certainly can do that, but I am perfectly happy with that. Um, if I didn't mention this before, one last thing that you want to do is you do want to crop out any parts of the picture that aren't really necessary for uh, the look of your image. So, uh, there's a lot of stuff that wasn't really necessary. Okay, so you can really zoom into your subject. All right, have fun.